Hi, I'm Carly Waterman and in this video I'm going to be talking about some of the ways in which we prioritise species and areas for conservation. As we've seen, prioritisation is important because unfortunately we don't have the resources to save everything. So we need to think very carefully about what we're going to save and where. There are lots of different ways to prioritise species and areas for conservation attention. Most approaches focus on a combination of vulnerability, that's how threatened a species or area is, and its irreplaceability. Species may be considered irreplaceable because they are unique, that is, there are no similar species in existence, or because they are endemic, which means they are only found in one place, or because they have some kind of economic or biological or cultural value to people. We'll be talking more about valuing biodiversity later on in the lesson, but for now, let's explore uniqueness and endemism in more detail. An example of a species that is highly irreplaceable because it's unique is the duck-billed platypus. You only have to look at a platypus to see how unique it is, with its duck-like bill, webbed feet and beaver-like tail. It looks like lots of different animals all mixed together. The platypus belongs to a small group of egg-laying mammals, or monotremes, that diverged from all other mammals over 160 million years ago. Evolutionarily distinct species like the platypus have few or no close relatives on the tree of life. That means they're highly likely to contain unique genetic material not found in other species. The extinction of an evolutionarily distinct species is a much greater loss to biodiversity than the extinction of a species that has many similar relatives. If the platypus went extinct tomorrow, then we would lose millions of years of unique evolutionary history. There would be nothing left on the planet that looked, lived and behaved like a platypus. The second reason a species may be considered highly irreplaceable is because it's endemic. This means it's found in just one place on the planet and nowhere else. Endemic species that are restricted to a relatively small area are important to conserve because they may be more vulnerable to extinction. They could be wiped out by a single threat, such as a forest clearance or a natural disaster. An example of a species that has high irreplaceability because it's endemic is the axolotl. This is a type of salamander that is only known from a very small area of canals and wetlands just south of Mexico City. Measures of irreplaceability, such as uniqueness, endemism and value, are usually weighted by a measure of vulnerability. That's how urgently we need to act. A species' vulnerability to extinction is assessed by experts using the IUCN Red List categories and criteria. The IUCN Red List of threatened species is the most comprehensive global inventory of the threat status of the world's species. As of the end of 2014, more than 75,000 species had been assessed for the IUCN Red List, and of these, more than 20,000 are listed as threatened, that's critically endangered, endangered or vulnerable. The black rhino is listed as critically endangered because it has experienced massive population declines caused primarily by illegal poaching for its horn. Some groups are more threatened than others. For example, 63% of cycads, that's plants that look a bit like palms or ferns, are threatened, compared with 13% of birds. The IUCN Red List gives a good snapshot of the current status of species and is an important tool for informing conservation prioritisation approaches. EDGE is an example of a species priority setting approach that is based on these ideas of irreplaceability and vulnerability. It combines a measure of a species' evolutionary distinctiveness with its red list status to produce an evolutionarily distinct and globally endangered score, also known as an EDGE score. This is a measure of a species' irreplaceability weighted by its extinction risk. The Chinese giant salamander is ranked second of more than 4,000 amphibians on the EDGE amphibians list. This Man-sized newt is the world's largest living amphibian, reaching lengths of up to 1.8 metres. It belongs to a small and ancient group of just three giant salamander species that diverged from all other amphibians over 170 million years ago, and it's listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List. 
Most species-focused prioritisation approaches try to maximise the number of species saved without necessarily considering the differences between those species. The edge approach is slightly different because it would prioritise a unique species like the platypus over a species that has lots of similar relatives like a house mouse. Biodiversity hotspots are one of the best known approaches for prioritising regions for conservation attention. To qualify as a hotspot, an area must meet two strict criteria. It must contain at least 1,500 vascular or higher plants as endemics. In other words, a hotspot is irreplaceable. It must have 30% or less of its original vegetation. In other words, a hotspot is also threatened. A good example of a biodiversity hotspot is the Atlantic forest of tropical South America. This contains 20,000 different species of plant, of which 40% are endemic, yet less than 10% of the forest survives. Over 50% of the world's plant species and 42% of terrestrial vertebrates are found in the world's 35 biodiversity hotspots. Yet their combined area of remaining habitat covers just 2.3% of the world's land surface. I've talked about two examples of prioritisation approaches, edge and biodiversity hotspots, but there are many more. Although there is often overlap, the species and areas prioritised by these different approaches can vary considerably. Different priorities lead to different results, so it's important that we think really carefully about what we want to conserve and how. In the next video, you'll learn more about tracking trends in biodiversity and measuring the effectiveness of conservation actions. Before you do that, complete the activity to test your knowledge on what you've learned so far.